Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. This week's episode is another reactionary episode and I am going to react to Sanja. Now her work is sublime. Her videos are amazing and there is nothing different about this one. There's one thing that I think her videos are missing though is somebody talking about the technique. So that's where I thought I would jump in and help everyone understand what she's doing with a little bit more detail. Now there's a little thing that I wanted to talk about before I get on with today's episode. Some people had mentioned in the comments over the last three videos that um, you know we shouldn't be criticizing other professional hairdressers and I wouldn't say that I have been critical of them or criticized their work. There are definitely some practices in these videos that I've commented on that I do not think we should all be following or they shouldn't be conveying to a young audience especially. Now here's an interesting point and something that I think our industry is lacking massively in. Critique. Critique is not criticism, guys, and do not forget that. I have worked with many, many stylists. I have trained many, many stylists, and I will critique their work, but it is in no way a criticism. They come to learn this very quickly on our journey that I will pull them up on things that they do. I will help them. I will point out things that could have been different so that these people can learn. And this is what I'm trying to do with these particular episodes. This is not about me being critical of anybody. This is critique. Think of this. If you were a musician, you would, you would be thrilled that you were big enough for someone to critique your work. If you were a chef, you would expect someone to critique your food. If you were a hotelier, you would expect someone to critique your hotel. In the hair industry, there's nobody to critique our work. And I think this is a crying shame because we do need somebody to say, this is good practice and this is bad practice. So I think critique is actually very important in all industries. If you're a teacher, for example, you will have somebody come in one, two or three times a year to stand there and watch your work and say to you, you could have done this differently, maybe that differently. And this is primary school education in the UK. I don't know what it's like anywhere else in the world, but this is primary school education in the UK. And this definitely happens. So I just thought I'd mention that before we get on with this particular episode so that everybody understands where I'm coming from. It's not to be critical. It is to simply just point out that any of the actual fact we all need critique every now and again. Me personally, I need critique. I am very hard on myself, but I do like to hear what other people think as well. So thank you very much for listening to that little speech, if you will. And I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Before you go, please do hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and chat to me down in those comments. All of those things are massively important to helping the channel grow and spreading the message across the internet and not to neglect my wonderful Patreons who have supported me to realizing my dreams of opening the Life of Hair Digital Academy, a platform where I will be able to help more hairdressers than I ever believed possible. So that is all in the pipeline and I'm very, very excited to be sharing with you that at some point in the future. So until then, look after yourself, enjoy this week's episode and I will catch you in the next one. So we noticed there that Sanja took a very thorough assessment of the lady's hair as she made sure that the style that she was going to put on her head suited her hair growth patterns and her head shape. That's something you really need to check out when you're cutting super short hair. No nape, no cow's licks, no nape whirls, no growth patterns that are going to affect the style that you've chosen. It's better to assess that in the beginning and say to your client, actually this style is going to require more styling because of x cow's lick or whatever do you still want to commit to that or would you prefer it if we did something that was more akin to your natural growth patterns it's best to give them that option so we noticed there that sanja had taken a section through the parietal ridge something that i have talked about so many times in my videos the parietal ridge is the bone just above the ear 
and it is the changing point between the flat sides and the very, very rounded top of the head. And it's a great place to take a section to decide how you want to distribute your weight through the sides. Sanja then took a horizontal section through the back just above the crown area to connect through a rectangle section that was sitting through the top. Now, this particular section is a area where she's gonna have the most texture, the most movement and the most length. And it's a very, very important part of the haircut to determine how you're gonna connect or not connect the sides in dependent on the style of the haircut. So I advocate you always section off this area so it's nice and clean and out the way and gives you plenty of clear area to work with on the sides. Then she's gonna take a section that is a rectangular section that goes straight through the crown area. And this is also important because you might be dealing with strong crown areas where you need to leave a bit more length to create a bit more softness to ensure that the client can wear their hair easily. The crown area can be a very, very strong growth pattern area. So it's best if we just treat that section completely separately to the rest. This is really, really important, guys, to remember that you take the same size sections, approximately one centimeter in Sandra's case, and I would take one size centimeter sections too, and you pull the hair straight out from the head shape, and your sections do not get bigger because you will start to create over direction to the previous section. And this will create finger marks in your work, which is when you pull the hair out horizontally, it will look like little bumps in the hair. And this is where the sections became slightly too big and the hair had to travel to the previous section to be cut to the guideline. This will not only then build up weight in places where you don't want it. For instance, if you kept doing that as you get to the back of the ear, the hair becomes substantially longer than the first section in the center back because of those incremental over directions that you created. So be very, very aware of your section size and be very precise at keep taking the same size sections. The cleaner sections, the easier is this is to do throughout the technique. That is something that I always bear in mind. Section size remains exactly the same. So we can see now that Sanja is really building up weight at the top of her section. That is because her finger angle is square to the head shape and the section is on the curve of the head. So the finger angle for her now is building up weight through here because of where she placed her section. A very, very important thing to remember. If that section was lower on the head, it would look like she wasn't building up much weight at all because she would then have to incorporate the curvature of the head later. But the very smart thing to do was take that section through the parietal ridge and that way she can see how her weight is starting to build up and whether she needs to do anything to adjust that while she's cutting hair. Now, the very last section on the front hairline, we noticed that she scooped it into the previous section. This will create over direction and slightly softer hair in that front hairline. So that's obviously a deliberate choice because she's very precise. So she's taken her sections very, very clean. And she obviously wants to retain that little bit of softness around the face to decide how to refine it later. 
So Sanja is going to complete this right hand side in exactly the same way that she completed the left hand side, pulling the hair vertically straight out from the head, building up shape in the parietal ridge area as she travels through the head shape. And she is repeating everything exactly as she did on the opposite side with excellent discipline. So for me, drying that underneath before you start refinement is really, really important. You can see exactly what you're working with. You can then go back and scissor over comb off any loose lengths that she left around the edges. You will note she didn't work hard on cutting right to the perimeter of her sections. She knew she was going to go back in and scissor over comb it even tighter. So there was actually no point in working those edges in nice and neat, saving lots of time, guys, because I think for a lot of people, cutting short hair is incredibly daunting and something that they do not relish doing. But you have to think ahead to save time. She didn't cut down to the perimeters, although she's more than capable of doing that because she knew scissor over combing to refine those edges was faster than working them down with her fingers. So for me here, Sanja is example of how we should scissor over comb. She has got a fantastic rhythm with the way that she scissor over combs and a really great way of practicing that with rhythm, with them. A really great way of practicing that rhythm is to imagine that the comb is going exactly half the speed that the scissor blades are opening and closing. So, or the other way to think about that is that the scissor blades are opening and closing at twice the rate the comb is moving up the hair. Does that make sense? So what we're looking for is we're looking for machine-like precision, but to do that, we need to really make sure that we are moving up the hair with a level of fluidity that will create that look. And so for me, Sanja is a excellent scissor over comber and she is moving with that level of fluidity where her comb is going nice and slow, but her scissors are going at that double the rate to create that beautiful, even scissor over comb blend. Let's have another little look at her now. A really, really clever thing to think about, and Sandra does um, write this on the screen during the video, is to work in columns when we're scissor over combing. Just work on the width of your blade as you travel up the hair and then move on. A bit like mowing the lawn. You go up the lawn and down the lawn, up the lawn and down the lawn. Well, with scissor over combing, you just need to take sections that are the width of your blade and work up the hair and make sure that section is perfect and then move on and work up the hair. Working through the haircut like that will make scissor over combing a thousand times easier. Don't ever move on before you've completed that section. And if you're right-handed, well, by the way, guys, this is a really hot tip. If you're right-handed, start in the right-hand side so your hand is free of the head and work your way round to the opposite side. That will make your life a lot, lot easier. So Sanja has completed the underneath, refined all her edges, done a beautiful job, it looks amazing. And now she's dropped her top down, but she has not touched it before she has actually bro dried the top. And I am a massive fan of this, especially on short haircuts, because I like to refine and cut my layers in to be bespoke to the person's growth patterns and head shape, as we mentioned right in the beginning. Sanja is a girl of my own heart in terms of the way she cuts. And so having that section dried off and in its natural fall gives you the best chance of creating something that will truly work for your client's hair texture. So the way that this works, guys, it's really, really simple, but it's really smart. You take section one that you pulled straight out from the head shape you cut that as a square line. Section two is pulled onto section one. So there's over direction and the line is cut. Then section three is pulled onto section two. So we are incrementally building up weight, traveling towards the front, but in a much more gentle way than pulling everything back to the fixed guide that would have been number one. 
which would give us an extreme curvature towards the front hairline in this particular instance. And we are gently building up weight in this way, doing this taking section one and pulling it straight out from the head, section two, over directing to section one, section three onto section two. It is such a better way of working like that. I applaud her for her technical skill here, fantastic. So Sandra's using a lovely point cutting technique there just to blend that line through from the front cheekbone, really accentuating the client's cheekbone through to the back. Love that um, shape that she's created through there. And I love the fact that she's just personalizing the technique with feel. You know, she's a very technical hair cutter, but she's letting her expression come through as well. And I think that is really important, something that we can lose sight of. If you're very technically minded, you can lose sight of expression and creative freedom within the technique. So we can see quite clearly here in these previous few sections where she's repeating exactly the same thing on the opposite side, you can see the over direction to the previous section quite clearly where she's taking those sections back to the previous section and point cutting to make the shape fit. So Sandra's then gone on to do exactly the same thing as she did through those side sections. She's just taking horizontal sections and over directing each one to the previous section and point cutting the hair for texture. But you'll note just a second ago, she gave the hair a good shake. She was just feeling the hair to see how much texture she felt like she needed to add in. And that's always really important to remember guys, never be afraid of getting your hands in the hair and feeling how much weight is left behind, how much hair is left behind, and trying to determine exactly how best going about the next steps within your haircut, especially when you're working with a bit more fluidity and a bit more freedom like Sandra is here. What I'm loving here is Sandra's freedom with this haircut. She is refining it beautifully, and I've said it to you before on my tutorials. Refining hair is massively important. Making sure that you work that hair through and create that beautiful bespoke finish on your short haircuts, not even your short haircuts, on any haircut is massively important. And the clients will 100% appreciate this level of detail. And there we have it. Sanja had done a beautiful job of that haircut. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So if you ever watch this, Sanja, smashed it, girl. Well done. I'm more than impressed. And I think uh, she has made quite a name for herself in terms of cutting hair on YouTube. And rightly so. I've seen many, many of her videos and been thoroughly impressed. So I'm sure I will go to the trouble of making a video about her wonderful techniques again at some point. And I think all her videos are short of is some commentary. So hopefully I've added to that video a little bit more of an insight into how she's working the hair and um, the way that she's worked with the hairs very naturally and beautifully. So, wonderful job there, Sanja. Thank you for your content you make. You do a wonderful job. So that's that for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and chat to me down in those comments. I love to hear from you every single week. I love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on the videos that I make. I am much of an open book as you could ever want me to be. So I am very happy to hear from you guys and love when you express how you feel about the videos. So until next time, I will catch you very, very soon for another episode of Life of Hair.